If you're viewing this video, you have uh, come to a help menu asking about uh, information related to commingling in terms of what it is and how it is to be used in BMP trains. My name is Marty Wanalista, and uh, my uh, actual email address uh, that I use is on the first slide that you're that you're viewing. So if you have to contact me. The best way is by is by email. Co-mingling is a very important option uh, within stormwater management, primarily because of the fact that there are off-site systems, off-site watersheds, which can drain into an on-site system. Or a definition of co-mingling is we're combining runoff into one BMP in a situation where the upstream or off-site runoff is delayed in time before it gets to that on-site system. Common uses may have an FDOT right-of-way BMP where the off-site runoff can be routed through the BMP or diverted around it. You know, a typical question there would be, should runoff from a development or a natural area be either bypassed or routed through an FDOT on-site? That means within the right-of-way BMP. Another common question we get as solutions where you have a delayed time for runoff reaching a central treatment system or a regional treatment system has to do with cities and counties which operate regional facilities. And they want to know if there's a new development, should this new development runoff be treated at the central or regional site, or should it be bypassed? And on this slide, you show the, we show a co-mingling operation, which says that there are two watershed in series, and a bypass where you have the two watershed discharges uh, being placed in parallel. Of course, the major difference is that the time it takes for watershed one or the off-site to get to the on-site uh, is significant or it does not appear uh, all, all at once. Now, why is there a special routine in BMP trains for this? Well, the normal situation for the BMP trains to use is when runoff water from a watershed is collected over time of that runoff event. In other words, the time reaching the treatment facility is minimal. In some situations, however, where you have distant off-site watersheds, they'll contribute runoff water, but it's delayed for some time after the start of that storm event. This delay is measured as the time of concentration from the edge of the off-site watershed, or the discharge point from this off-site watershed, to the inlet of the on-site BMP. We're recommended that it's calculated based on a one inch per hour rainfall event. The delay then allows the time to recover in a treatment facility which is on site. As an example, for retention, you may have, after the start of a storm, you may have infiltration which occurs within that retention facility. But there's no off-site water getting to it. At the end of that storm event, let's say on the slide there, it shows four hours. At the end of the storm event, then the actual retention or infiltration is taking place and some of the volume is recovered within that retention facility. The retention facility can be a swale, it can be a uh, rain garden, it can be a depression storage, and more than likely it's a retention basin that's designed to infiltrate the water. So obviously, once the on-site system fills up, and that off-site system runoff hasn't got there yet, there's, a, there's a, some infiltration. So there's unused capacity within uh, the retention facility. What I'm saying here, the delay is 10 hours, and then the pond or the basin fills back up. Then after 16 hours, it starts draining, and then 48 hours, it shows up. Uh, uh, you know, a lower elevation of water within the retention basin. That collection efficiency depends really on the off-site runoff versus the on-site runoff, the volumes of, and the design size of the on-site system as well as that rainfall pattern uh, in a meteorological zone. Well, B 
BMP trains is already set up to take the meteorological area. And in fact, there are five in our state. And it takes it in, count, in terms of the inter-event dry period, the rainfall volumes, the annual volumes, and the distribution of events in a year. It also has, BMP trains also has all the watershed conditions. Thus, the flow into the on-site retention facility from both on-site and off-site watersheds is already accounted for in BMP trains. Now, I said flow. However, the timing of the off-site and the runoff volumes were not programmed because of that delay function. Well, to account for the filling and draining of a basin, then, simulations were performed using a rain gauge station at all of the meteorological regions in the state, thus accounting for the capture efficiency of each design basin size, and everything from 0.1 inches all the way up to 4 inches over that watershed in each meteorological region. So all this has been done, the simulations have been done, and the value then uh, of the increased efficiency or decreased efficiencies are then, are then calculated and included in the BMP trains model for retention as long as you have that delay, uh, air, uh, delay amount uh, programmed into the, into the uh, BMP trains. But for on-site wet detention pots, I've talked about retention, I'm going to go to wet detention. The annual flow through a wet pond affects the residence time. So twice the flow reduces the residence time by a half. And as the chart shows here from BMP trains, you could actually see by reducing the annual average residence time, that's the x-axis, you affect the treatment efficiency. An example of that is shown there in the graph for all kinds of annual residence time. Usually you're dealing with somewhere around 31 days uh, average annual residence time. But of course, some uh, facilities, uh, ponds and uh, throughout the state, they could have longer residence times. And uh, maybe this uh, added uh, uh, water coming into the wet detention pond will not affect uh, the average residence time efficiency very much, especially if you're on the higher part of those curves. So thus, the BMP trains model already adjusts for residence time. And really, the delay time has very little effect. I mean, you're delaying maybe 10 hours, 6 hours, or whatever, and your residence time may be in 31 days or 100 days. So it affects very little uh, the calculation. That delay time affects very little the calculation. Now to show you the input example of BMP trains effectiveness, uh, on the chart here on the watershed uh, page, you have a delay time which you put in if you're dealing with retention. And note that the catchment one has to be the upstream or the off-site uh, watershed. This happens to be a BMP trains analysis for a light and industry uh, watershed of five acres, the DCIA and the percentage uh, DCIA uh, and the curve number are already added. Catchment two is the same size, five, uh, it's, it's five uh, acres in size. And uh, again, we have the same characteristics. For this situation, if you had no co-mingling and the on-site regional retention BMP would have an efficiency, since it's the regional one in the second column, it would have an efficiency of 73.9%, and that's for a half inch of treatment. However, if you allow the off-site water to go through the uh, the off-site water to go through the on-site regional facility, the program automatically calculates that for you, and there you can see your commingling uh, uh, schematic of uh, the off-site going onto the on-site or the uh, upstream going into the uh, regional uh, system, and the overall efficiency is 66%. So we have gone from an efficiency of 73.9 to an efficiency of uh, 66. So well, now we'll return to the BMP trains model. 